Hi, welcome back to Box Delight. Today we're going to be learning to play upcoming card game Shards of Madness. This is an existing game published by Joy Pie in China, and UK publisher Triple Ace Games have picked up the license to publish this game in English. It plays one to four. I'm going to teach you how to play, and then I'm going to show you a demonstration of the solo game. This is a pretty swift, sharp, competitive game where players take on the role of cultists, where you'll be gathering crystals which give you the energy to summon mystical creatures, items, other cultists, and indeed the great old ones like Cthulhu himself. In the solo game, we're taking on an automated opponent called Leo, and that's what I'll demo you shortly. But let's learn to play the game. It's a very simple game to learn with lots of depth. It's one of those games where the rules are straightforward, but it has a ton of tactical depth. All right, let's set up. First, we put all the crystals in a draw spin bag. Shuffle the cards. Draw seven and place them in a row to create what's called the altar. Take the rest of the deck and split it equal to the number of players. So if there's two players, two decks. If there's three players, three decks, four players, four decks. And place each deck between two players. So we might have a player sitting here, a player sitting here, and a player sitting here. So every player has a deck to their left and a deck to their right. These decks are called gates, and each gate is sealed with five random crystals drawn from the bag. Each player takes one of these dials. The graphics on here are just a thematic. In fact, there's a reverse side you might just want to use. The important thing is you've got numbers of six spaces, one to six. You can choose whichever design you wish. Each player starts with three crystals. Place them beside your board. And then randomly choose a start player. Let's say this player here is first player. The player to their right takes the Leo token or standee. This Leo the Elder marks which player will take the final turn of the game. Remember, your objective is to get six cards. The first player to get six cards in their player area triggers the end of the game. Game starts with the first player and just goes around the table clockwise until one player has six summoned cards in front of them. Or indeed, one of these gates is drained of cards. Because we're going to be refreshing the altar from these gates as cards are claimed. As soon as that end game condition is reached, you'll continue playing clockwise until the player holding the Leo the Elder has completed their turn, then it's game over. And then we'll count points. Because cards will award points. On the top left of each card is a number of points. These are called madness. So at game end, you'll have a bunch of cards in front of you and you'll just sum the number of madness points. When it's your turn, you can do one of three things. You can collect crystals, collect crystals into your play area. You can convert crystals from your player into mana. Mana sits on your board, or you can use mana on your board to summon cards. Okay, so collect crystals, Turn crystals into mana, use mana to summon cards. Nice and simple. To collect crystals, you can collect crystals from the two gates that are adjacent to you. So for this player, this gate or this gate, they can't collect crystals from over here. This player can collect crystals from here, and this player can collect crystals from here. You've got three ways of collecting crystals. You can either collect one crystal from each adjacent gate, any crystal, any one crystal, Or secondly, you can choose one of your adjacent gates, take one of the crystals from your play area, place it on that gate, and then take one of each crystal that doesn't match that color. So I placed blue here, so I could take one red, one yellow, one green. Okay, Not can take, must take. Okay, You must take. Right. 
So let's say I chose to place red, I would take one yellow, one green, one blue. Okay. Or maybe if I placed yellow over here, I would take blue, green, red, purple. Okay. So one of each crystal from that gate that doesn't match the color you just placed on there. The third and final option for gathering crystals is choose one of the gates, place one of your crystals on it, then choose one color that doesn't match and take all crystals of that color. So I could place red on here, for example, and take the two yellow. Or maybe I will put yellow on here and take the two purple. Okay, so all crystals. If you were this player, maybe you'd place purple on here and take the two green. Okay, all crystals that do not match the color you placed. Or I could place red on here and take the three purple or the two green. Okay, so those are your three options one from each, one of each color that doesn't match, or all of one color that doesn't match. That's how you collect crystals into your play area. Converting crystals into mana. Once you've collected crystals, let's say we decide to do this, collect some crystals, then on our next turn, we can convert crystals into mana. Okay, we need to put crystals on here, convert them into mana, so that we can then summon cards. There's two ways of converting crystals into mana. You can convert different types of crystals into mana. Let's say I've got four crystals. Let's say I want to generate four blue mana. You take one of the crystals that you're sacrificing, so here four, place it on the number four, we're sacrificing four crystals, and the rest go back in the bag. Okay, so in this set situation, I could create four blue or I could create four yellow. Or maybe I want to create three blue, in which case, I have to give up three crystals, one of which is blue. Okay, two go back in the bag. All right, nice and simple. The second way of doing it is if you convert matching crystals of one color. So let's say I want to sacrifice these three yellows. This time, although it's three yellows, because they all match, you get a plus one bonus. All right, so three yellows will actually create four mana. The rest go back in the bag. So that's how you convert crystals into mana. Your final option then is to summon a card. This time, you look on the bottom left of each card in the vault. This card here costs four yellow mana. So I can spend that four yellow mana and purchase this card and place it in my player area. Okay, I've got five madness. Let's say I had these crystals. And uh, let's say I give up these five and created five purple mana. And then I can, on my next turn, purchase Shantak. This one only costs four. So I spend five, and that takes it down to one. Crystals in the middle here can't be spent. Instead, they'll count as what's called experience for future summoning. Let's say I had three mana here. From now on, this one here will mean every card that costs purple will cost one less. So this one here, this Shantak, instead of costing four, will only cost three. If I had two purple crystals here, this is two experience. Every purple card now comes at a cost of minus two. So Shantak here, instead of costing four, would only cost two. So one of the strategies involved in this game is understanding how to spend your mana. Let's say I've got a situation like this, or even like this. Let's say I want to buy Shantak. I could, I've got four mana here, I could spend this four mana and pay for it. Job done. But there's a better way. I could spend one of this mana, this two, put that in here as one experience. Now I've got to pay three more. I'll take the four down to one. Okay, I've paid the four mana, one from here, three from here, and I've gathered two experience for the future. Every purple card in the future will cost two less. 
So you can see Simple's rule set, collect crystals, convert them into mana, buy cards. Suddenly there's an extra layer of depth because you're also trying to spend your mana, collect, convert to mana, and then spend it in such a way as to gather experience to make these cards cheaper in the future. Lots of interesting decisions. Additionally, when you summon a card, what you'll notice is they, as well as having a cost, they also have text on the bottom here. So let's have a look at some of these cards. There's four types of cards. This icon in the top right tells you that this is an item, this is a mythical creature, this is a great old one, and then fourth, cultists. And each type has different types of effects. So this card here says, after performing a mana action, you may keep one discarded crystal in your hand. And then this one says, sacrifice this card. So although you may summon cards, they stay in your player area, but you can sacrifice them if they say you can. That means you just discard it and it no longer counts. You don't have its four virtue points anymore. You sacrifice it to move one crystal from any seal to your dial as three mana. Crystals on gates are sealing those gates. Okay. Right, we've got another rule to learn. When you're collecting crystals, what happens when you remove the last crystal from a gate? Let's say you choose to remove one on your turn. You collect crystals, one from two adjacent gates, because you're trying to collect green, let's say. So you have to green from here and a green from here. This gate no longer has crystals on it. If there's no more crystals on the gate, then the seal is removed. What you do then is you draw the top two cards from this deck. This is the final rule and the last complication, really. You draw two cards from the top of that deck. You can look at them, and then you can keep one. So let's say I try, decide to keep Cultist of the Earth. The one you keep, you place face down and tuck it under your player board. Only you can look at this card. The other card goes face up on the altar. Okay, just add it to the altar. Now, when you're summoning cards, you can always summon cards from the altar. All players can summon cards from the altar. But you can also secretly summon this card. Okay. So I know that this one costs three green. So on my turn, my next turn, I might convert these two crystals because they're green. I get the plus one bonus. So two crystals into three. Discard the other. Then in my subsequent turn, there's nothing in the altar that costs green. But I might say I'm going to summon this card. It costs three green. It's the cultist of the earth. Pay the three. Put it in my player area and it says... It has an, uh, an ongoing effect. Sacrifice to move one crystal from any seal to your dial as three mana. So I might decide then on a later turn to sacrifice that and turn that one red crystal into three mana. Perfect. The gate that we remove two cards from, once you've removed the two cards, place one on the altar, tucked one under your player board, you reseal it with five random crystals from the bag. Now, it could be that you get to a point, and in the multiplayer game particularly, there's a lot of positioning and juggling about, am I going to let you know let my opponents be the last player to take cards from the deck, unseal it, and take those secret cards? So there's a little bit of tactical back and forth, not wanting to leave just one crystal behind because it becomes an easy target for your opponents. But let's say I've, I've managed to do so on my turn. This time, I've unsealed both the gates at the same time. This time I get to do, do the same thing on both gates. So I'll draw two, pick one, secretly hide it. The other goes on the altar and reseal it. Do the same on this side. Okay, pull two, keep one, put the other on the altar. You can only ever have two cards tucked under your player board at any one time. So if you end up with three, you've got to throw one back onto the altar. Okay. Now remember, the altar all the time as players are summoning them is getting smaller, expanding as gates are unsealed, refilled, yeah, cards are being collected, and so on and so on. Right, so that's the game. Lots of depth in a simple game. Right, let's set up and learn to play the solo game. Incidentally, I've, pl I've been playing this two player. I've not played three or four, but I've been playing two player. Really sharp, nice uh, tactical battle. And it gets really thinky, even though it's quite a quick game. It's the kind of game where you can have a two player duel 
and set up play again. And yeah, pretty cut and thrust. All right, in the solo game, there's different levels of difficulty. So in a regular multiplayer game, there's seven cards in the altar. In the solo game, you start with only five cards in the altar for what they call an easy game. For a medium game, four cards in the altar. For a hard game, you start with only three cards in the altar. Now, Leo, our opponent, doesn't use crystals. He doesn't have a dial. So it's just us. But we place the Leo the Elder token instead of marking whoever's last in the game. This represents Leo, and we place him to the right of the altar, like so. We'll create two gates, just like in a two-player game. One to the left and one to the right. We seal those gates, each with five crystals. And we draw three crystals for ourselves, for our starting hand. We'll play our turn as normal. There's one exception, and that is when you place cards on the altar, you must always place them on the right end of the altar. Okay, because the order now becomes significant. Leo is like a timer, and on his turn, Leo always goes first. If there's cards to Leo's left, he moves to the left by one card. Okay, you'll have your turn, Leo moves to the left, you have your turn, and so on. Okay, and that's it. And when Leo gets to the left end of the altar, he summons the leftmost card and then moves back to the right. Okay. A couple of other changes. The game can end in one of two ways. If either you or Leo have summoned your six cards as normal, the game ends and you'll both score your madness as normal. If your madness is higher than Leo's, you win. The second way of the game ending is if the final card of the altar is summoned. Once that final card is summoned, the game ends immediately and you lose. Now I've probably changed the order here a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I'm just doing a little demo for you. So in the solo game, there's a little bit of... Uh, so you've got two things to think about. First, you're trying to keep your score ahead of Leo's, but also you want to make sure that you're removing the seals from these gates so that you can get more cards onto the altar. Remember, when you remove the last crystal from a gate, the seal's removed, you draw two cards, you place one on the altar and you keep one. So you've got to keep that in mind. You don't want the game to finish too soon. Okay, Leo goes first. That's it. Now, Cthulhu's here. Blue would be good. There's no blue here, so we're not going to be able to catch that just yet but there is a quick win right here right so i can on my turn i can convert two yellow into a three what might be better is to try and score the big points and let him have this one so what i might do instead is gather crystals by placing a yellow on here and grabbing the three purple his turn and i might Put the yellow on here and grab the two green. His turn. I've got six crystals here. I think I'm going to use them. Create six purple mana. His turn. I'm going to use the six mana, summon Ithaqua. When scoring, each different card number scores plus one madness. Okay. He moves to the left. I know on his next turn he's going to take this, and I probably want to do something like grab one from each side. Yeah, so collect crystals. On his turn he's going to gather the cultist of the wind, move to the right. I'm going to do this, draw two cards because I've opened that gate. Want to keep this one. That one goes on the altar in the rightmost spot. Now, in hindsight, I realise I've made an error here because with Leo here, you never place cards to the left of Leo. So even though he's here, when you're adding cards to the right, it should go here like this. Okay, so look out for that, that mistake.
This turning goes here. I need to reseal that gate. If I get the two red, I can place three red for four mana and take this one. But you can see, because I'm paying the exact number all the time, I'm not creating any experience. Experience is like the engine that allows you to then get cards more cheaply. So I want to think about that. But it's good to see blues arrived. You do want to pay attention to the cards in your player areas. This one says each different card number. It means madness value. So I've got a seven. This one under here, I think, was a six. Yeah, and this one's cost red. So I might want to gather red. I've got six and seven, maybe eight. But also, I really don't want him to grab Cthulhu. So maybe six blue is a good one. I've got four. But again, paying six doesn't help with your experience, but it's it's worth it for eight points. So I guess a quick way to get six blue would be to do something like this. Put yellow on here and then grab one of each different type. Here's go. Then I'll crystallize one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll put the blue on there. Sacrifice those. Then on this turn I can pay six, grab Cthulhu. So when scoring each different crystal type in your hand, it scores plus one madness. So I've got two cards now. He goes. Actually, I might just do this. He's going to take this one. We've got to be careful now. There's only two cards left on the altar. So I'm going to do this. Uh, he's going back to the right. Draw to keep one. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yeah, they're both pretty much the same, aren't they? So do I want red or yellow? That's the only question. There's red. So I'm going to put yellow. I'm going to put yellow. Okay, his turn. Oh, reseal. Give it a good old shake. Two, three, four, five. One thing I think would be great is to have a bigger bag. I think the guys might be considering that. And there's an opportunity here to remove the seal on this one, which I think I'm going to do. Let's do that. Okay, let's put this one, Cultist of Fire. And actually that was a good call because now I've got lots of cards here. I might just pop that one back. Yeah. All right, good play. We've got five cards back on the altar. We'll reseal this one. Keep doing this out of turn. <laughs> Seal it, then he takes his turn. Oh, lots of blue. Give up six crystals. And we'll put that red on here. So remember, give up six tokens, you get to place one of them on your dial in the six spot. Okay. And then I can spend this. Let's put the Necron Necronomicon into play. It costs five. Five red crystals. Okay, so six goes down to one, and now I've got one experience. This one says each turn you may move one crystal to this card from your hand, and then when scoring, each crystal type on this card will score plus one madness, plus one point. So we could potentially move this on here, but not yet, because um, he's taking this. Moves to the right, so he's got three, I've got three. We're doing well though, because our points are higher than his. He's got 13, yeah, we've got more, 21. So what I think I'm gonna do is put the red on here, grab those three yellows. And I'm gonna crystallize those three yellows, because they're matching, it gives a plus one bonus, so we put a crystal on the four. And I'm gonna buy Cultist of the Wind, that goes down to one. I need to pay three, right? Four down to one. This one says sacrifice to move one crystal from any seal to your dial as three mana. So I could sacrifice that and grab one of these crystals and put them on here as three mana. Okay. 
grab one of each. Now I'm in danger now and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, so I think I want to do this before he moves to the right. Okay, we've got the silver key and the colours out of space. Okay, this one says, after performing a summon action, you may perform a mana action. Okay, so turn crystals into mana after summoning a card. This one says, refill your seals to five crystals. So your seals are the ones in your left and right. I don't want that. Let's place that to the right, we'll type that under. He takes this and moves to the right. Okay, we managed to save the game a little bit longer. Let's seal this. Two, three, four, five. I want to take another red, I think. So I might place a blue on here, grab one of each color that's different. Then take the mana action. Two becomes three. It's always a minimum of two. All right. Two becomes three. Moves to the right. Let's place a yellow here, grab those three blues. He goes here, then I'm going to grab these two, which unlocks this one. Don't want that. I'm going to keep that one and toss this one, I think. Keep those two. Reseal. We're nearly there. One, two, three, four, five. And I think he's going to take that one. So he's at five cards, I'm at four. So we do want to grab a couple more cards if we can. Yeah, I'm going to purchase this one. It's going to, I've got one experience, so it's only going to cost me two instead of three. So it's going to cost me two mana. I'll buy this. It says sacrifice to move one crystal from any seal to your dial. I'll take this. Cool. He goes. Then I've now got two experience on red. So this. This one's only going to cost four red. I don't have any red. So, oh, I've been forgetting to place crystals on here. This is why you need to keep them face up. Let's assume I've done that a couple of times. No, I can't cheat. <laughs> I can't cheat. So I'm going to crystallize. One, two, three, four, five. He goes. And I'm going to put, put a green on here and grab. No, I don't think it matters. Just going to do that. And then I'll immediately end the game before he has a chance to buy this by paying for this. It cost me four. And I've got the six I need. I should have done something like that as well. I was forgetting to do this each time, but that's it. We've got six cards. That's immediately ending the game. And then we score our madness. That's two points there, obviously, for that one, plus six. Actually, this one lets me perform a collect crystals action. So I should have been able to do something like this. Okay, so six, seven, eight. 13, 21. This one says each type of crystal in your hand scores plus one madness. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 30, 34, 41. Each different card number scores plus one madness. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. 46 is a resounding score. Take away Leo's score. 46, take away 12, 19, 24. 46, take away 24 is 22. So we won by 22 points. A good victory.
So actually, that one played out well, but that was on easy mode. Okay, that was on easy mode. Like I say, there's medium and then there's hard. So I should play on medium next, try and beat that, and then go up. And if you want to, you can keep replaying levels, trying to beat your score. But it gives you a short, sharp problem solving. The solo game does play very different to the multiplayer game. With the multiplayer game, it's a lot of trying to outwit your opponent, and I really recommend it. But if you want a little solo game that just plays really quickly and gives you some little puzzle, then Shards of Madness is really cool. So look out for it. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Thanks for watching.